On behalf of the General Assembly, I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Evarist Daishmir, President of the Republic of Burundi, and invite him to address the Assembly. Thanks to God, the Almighty and All-Powerful, and the Merciful for having allowed us to participate in this forum in the beautiful city of New York in such pleasant conditions. Excellencies, Mr. Chaba Kereshi, President of the 77th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellencies, Heads of State and Government, Your Majesties, Secretary General of the United Nations, Heads of Delegation, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen. At the outset, allow me, Your Excellency, Mr. President, to express and rightly so, my deepest thanks to the government and people of the United States of America. I particularly extend my thanks to the people and authorities of New York for the legendary hospitality that has been shown to me and my accompanying delegation. I also wish to convey my heartfelt congratulations to His Excellency Mr. Chaba Kereshi for his deft election to the presidency of the 77th session of the United Nations General Assembly. Burundi, through me, assures you, Mr. President, of its full support and cooperation as you discharge your mandate in service of humankind. I would also like to take this opportunity to express my deep gratitude to your predecessor, Mr. Abdullah Shahid, for the remarkable work conducted in incredibly difficult conditions in a context marked by the current crisis which followed the COVID-19 pandemic as well as security crises shaking several regions of the world. I also wish to pay a much-deserved tribute to the Secretary-General of our organization, Mr. Antonio Guterres. He has spared no effort to discharge his mission so well in this difficult juncture marked by several crises. Excellencies, Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, a Burundian saying that I'd like to translate here states, in times of peace, sides can become plowshares. In other words, in, the time, in times of peace, everything is possible. Today's world must draw inspiration from that proverb. Unfortunately, today, the world has become a vast arena in which we watch eyes full of tears, gruesome acts being perpetrated in certain nations across the world as a result of wars, bloody massacres, and we also see flows of refugees as well as food insecurity and the destabilization of global economic systems. Today, countries across the world are enduring turbulence as a result of the situation in Ukraine. In Africa, terrorism and violent extremism continue to lash the region of the Sahel, the Horn of Africa and Central Africa. And we're seeing a trend for these scourges to spread to the south of Africa. The same things are being seen in other regions of the world because, as we've stated, terrorism knows no borders. Climate change, which causes famines, knows no bounds. But together, with political will, we can conquer these scourges. I am sure of it. I'm sure of it, Mr. President, because my country, Burundi, knows all too well following successive political crises that we have endured that not only have destroyed human lives but also the environment. We know this context all too well. Today we have recovered and the country is walking boldly along the path towards socio-economic development. 
Burundi is attempting to walk this path by harnessing the dividends of peace and security, stability and social cohesion, restored thanks to the people of Burundi themselves, but also thanks to the contribution made by the international community. As such, we want to see the spirit of peace, brotherhood and justice be a shared concern so that all peoples of the world can fully enjoy their rights to live happily and in dignity. In terms of humanitarian assistance, Burundi has welcomed onto its territory with warmth and dignity thousands of refugees coming from the Democratic Republic of, of the Congo in all their ethnic diversity. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, peace is something we hold dear. Its absence weighs heavy on the day-to-day -day lives of our peoples. It is with this in mind that we will never flinch, not for one second, when it comes to making decisions related to matters of security, or rather implementing these decisions once they've emerged from this illustrious and crucial forum that is the United Nations Organization. It is bolstered by this conviction that Burundi will never let up in its tooth and nail struggle to contribute to the return of peace to all countries where it has been disturbed. We will do this within the United Nations, within the African Union or in other regional bodies. Proof of this commitment is our current intervention in Somalia and the CAR. In the same vein, Burundi has committed to contributing to returning peace to the Democratic Republic of the Congo as part of an East African Community Initiative. I'd like to take this opportunity to request that the international community support the Nairobi pro process to give succor to the Congolese people in distress. Still discussing peace and security now, my Participation in this session compels me to humbly request that the United Nations lend their assistance as we attempt to pursue terrorist groups which begin are beginning to infiltrate our sub-region, of course not forgetting those terrorist groups that are already raging in other corners of the world. The East African community of which Burundi is now chair, has just welcomed a new member, the DRC, and with other heads of state of, heads of, state of member countries, we have set ourselves the goal of stabilising the whole community so that the peoples of our country can finally focus on socio-economic development. It is for this reason that the government of Burundi is currently developing its road infrastructure its, and its transport infrastructure more generally, roads, railways and air infrastructure. We're also developing multimodal transport and, and our lake transport network so that we can connect our whole nation and connect it up with the sub-region and that's vital for my country. Together with the DRC and Tanzania, Burundi is working closely and tirelessly to lend new momentum to the railway project linking Uvinza, Musongati, Gitega, Bujumbura, Uvira and Kindu. This railway project should link three countries and the Atlantic and Indian Ocean. This mega project will not only lend new life to the economies of our three countries, but will also make it easier for goods and people to move through the sub-region. We wish to see the member states of the United Nations rise up and speak with one voice to protect and promote the human rights that all humans should enjoy without exception. We appreciate what's already been done today, but work has yet to be done so that all people can fully enjoy all of the rights which they should enjoy by virtue simply of being a human being. It is for this reason that I wish to take this opportunity to warmly thank the international community for the efforts it has made to restore peace and stability to my country. In that vein, I wish to inform this August Assembly that equitable justice 
for all is today a reality in Burundi. Human rights, and the free, including the freedom of expression and the press, are respected across all of Burundian territory. However, certain officials carry, carrying the torch of certain institutions of our organization are stymieing and discouraging this positive development through the politicization of democracy and the politicization of the fight against impunity. In certain countries, including my own, when democracy as it is defined begins to take root, some United Nations officials distort it by labeling it as not credible or not inclusive, and that serves to keep us in a state of fruitless tension. When we struggle day by day to uh, to fight against impunity, certain United Nations civil servants continue to seek to discredit our actions. It is therefore high time, Mr. President, that the High Commissioner for Human Rights be in tune with all of Member States to sh have a shared reading of the direction taken by my country's policies, rather than simply wanting to remote control their actions through various commissions and offices and special rapporteurs. The time has come, President, so that the United Na for the United Nations to recognise the progress made by my country over the last 17 years and for the UN to understand that the status of a fragile country no longer applies to Burundi. Excellencies, President, ladies and gentlemen. Humankind is at the heart of our economy, from the scale of the family to the, world, to the world as a whole. We must therefore contribute to the development of human capital, providing our people with the appropriate tools, experience and adapted skill, uh, skills that are adapted to the demands of the day and age. We must find solutions to counter the threats to our economy, to our health, to our education system, to our peaceful coexistence, in a word, to our way of living and living well within our states and between states around the world. We know that the United Nations is working to contribute to improving the standards of living for people around the world. This is done through, access, through accessing sufficient family income to ensure a decent standard of living. Education is a key tool to achieve this. Now, indeed, speaking of education, no one could, it best, could put it better than Nelson Mandela, who said, and I quote, education is the most powerful weapon to change the world. End of quote. Several years after this famous quotation, this is a way of this remains a way of achieving positive change within our communities and remains so education allows young people to have hopes and dreams for the future and is an effective tool in itself to fight against violence and terrorism and thus in my country we are coming currently launching reforms we are rethinking our the policy for our education policy so that our young people can become sim more than merely public servants we are pleased to note that in my country the education is free of charge and this has significantly increased the attendance at school by girls and boys and school dropout rates which is some often linked to uh, food scarcity or the fact that schools are very far away from home or there aren't enough uh, money to cover education. School dropout rates have therefore significantly fallen. In order to transform our young people into agents for peace and inclusive development in Burundi, we've set up an ambitious economic empowerment programme and a young, per a young person's uh, jobs programme which aims to reduce unemployment through creating jobs for young people through entrepreneurship. To support this program, we have made available for young people a, a young person's investment bank and a support and guarantee fund for them to facilitate access to credit. This is also true for women who are indeed a large number of Burundian young people. 
We created an investment bank for women and we continue to undertake reforms that seek to improve health and education for women. The office of the First Lady in Burundi opened, opened a hospital to treat obstetric fistula and with our development partners in Burundi, the office continues to innovate to seek to improve the standard of living of Burundian women. President, it is, it is indeed still an urgent issue when we think to look at the managing the devastating impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. I, call the, I, may, I would like to therefore appeal to all partner, development partners in the African continent and urge them to take brave measures to support economies of African states which have been very seriously affected by the ramifications of different crises at the moment as where well as we are that no country around the world was created to receive help eternally, this support should be done through mutually beneficial strategic partnerships. These be focused inter alia on investment, promotion of trade and technology transfer. In order to succeed in developing human capital, and in order to make our population dynamic and productive, a government is currently providing each district with at least one hospital and healthcare centres to prevent and care for and treat diseases, epidemics and pandemics. We welcome, we are, are proud to have been able to effectively fight against the COVID-19 pandemic, but the fight continues. I would like to inform you also that health care is free for children of under five years of age and for pregnant women who give birth in hospital in public hospitals and health care centres. This has made a significant reduction to infant mortality. Within this framework, the fight that we are waging for economic development of my country includes particularly developing the agricultural sector. To this end, my government christened this year the Agricultural Year in Burundi under the topic of agriculture as a source of uh, supporting our national economy. Our agriculture development programme includes changing mentalities and current practices. We are encouraging the population to reach higher and not simply content themselves with producing uh, developing and to consume locally, but also to focus on exports, to pool their efforts, to work together with agricultural cooperatives and progressively replace hoes with modern tools and agricultural technology. Within the framework of the environment, we're looking at the environment now, Burundi is not sitting idle here either, particularly because we are experiencing cases of drought in some regions, as well as floods from rivers and lakes and landslides, which sometimes can be deadly. They can carry away houses, farms, plantations, and thus they're then leading to food shortages. When faced with this, Burundi uh, rallies with the decision made to make, carry out protection, conservation and environmental management work. And this is done through various activities throughout the country. All of this is accompanied by learning on how to be resilient to climate change, not only through practicing sustainable irrigation, but also through activities to protect soil and also marking out contours and reforesting land as, as part of projects that have been initiated by the government called Iwi Burundi Irumbaye, a Burundi with covered. Every, in my country, every Thursday um, is dedicated to this, uh, these efforts across the country. We should also seek to progressively develop infrastructures to support production, particularly of energy and transport, to su better support growth in other sectors that lead to, that then create jobs. The Burundian government has 
started a large amount of work on the energy sector through the mobilisation of resources through co-financing and private sector investment. The aim here is to showcase the potential of hydroelectric and solar panels and geothermic resources and uh, how to manage municipal waste as well as peat. Uh, the two sectors that I've just mentioned also under, that I've just underscored also provide crucial support to developing the mining sector. We wish here to develop a technical and financial partnership that is mutually beneficial and balanced in, in the field of prospecting, exploitation and processing of minerals and geological projects. And uh, studies that have been carried out have shown that we have a very rich and as of yet unexploited subsoil. President, ladies and gentlemen, so that peace and development become, becomes a reality, we need to ensure good governance and good management of public finances. This allows us not only to tackle frustrations amongst our citizens which are rooted in social conflict, but also to allow us to plan our national economy well. We'd like to inform you that our national mechanism to tackle corruption and related activities are very strong. And acts of corruption are tackled effect effectively and our citizens are satisfied with this. In terms of economic activity, Burundi is on the right track by leveraging its mineral resources, its road, trans road maritime and rail transport, or soon to be rail transport, um, and we also would like to inform investors that the banks of the Tanganyika Lake is currently being developed to support the growth of tourism. And other new tourist sites are also currently being developed with, at the interior of the country. President, ladies and gentlemen, before I conclude, I wish to once again reaffirm the determination of my country to continue to enjoy good diplomatic relations and win-win cooperation with all states and all international organisations as we seek to tackle the, fun the challenges that threaten us all. We welcome the resumption of good political, diplomatic and economic relations which had been frozen with certain states and international organisations. It is our ardent wish that we were able to enjoy good, strong relations with countries and international organisations. This will contribute to a bright future for Burundi and for all countries around the world. Thank you for your kind attention and God bless you all. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the President of the Republic of Burundi for the statement just made and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear an address.